Hello and welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for this DMU live stream which is dedicated entirely to talking to you about the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences um, and what it's like to be an international um, applicant, inquirer and student within our community. Uh, my name is Vanessa and I work here in the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences and I am delighted to be joined uh, this afternoon, I was going to say this evening, this afternoon by um, two of my colleagues. So I'll just bring them on screen now. We have um, the Associate Dean for International Study. And then we're also joined by a current um, health and life science student, Juanita, who's joining us from back home in Colombia. So thank you both for joining me today and, and talking to us about your knowledge and experience of what it's like for in, uh, international study here in the faculty. So you can interact with us throughout this live stream. So you will see that there is a comment um, section where you can ask us your questions. You can drop us a comment and um, be really good to know who's joining us today. So let us know where you're from, which country you're joining us from, and let us know what course you're interested in or what you've applied for. It'd be really good to know. So we're going to talk to you today um, a little bit about what we offer here in the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences. So the types of courses that we have, as well as giving you a bit more information about who we actually are and, and what we sort of do here. So sit back, listen up, and we shall make a start. But before I hand over to my colleague, um, John, who's gonna to talk to you a little bit more about the faculty, I'm gonna just play a very short video. Um, it's actually from our Dean of the faculty, Dr. Simon Oldroyd. Um, and he's really just gonna set the sort of backdrop to what we're gonna be talking about in the live stream. So enjoy this short video. Hello, I'm Simon Oldroyd, Dean of the Faculty of Health and Life Sciences here at DMU. The Faculty of Health and Life Sciences at DMU brings together high quality education, industry links and specialist teaching. It's home to our wide range of pharmaceutical, healthcare, lab based and social science courses which aim to improve the lives and health of those around us. Many of our courses are professionally accredited or endorsed by professional bodies, meaning you can be assured of receiving teaching of the highest quality with a focus on building the skills which are really sought by employers. Behind me, you can see the 19th century Hawthorne building, which has facilities designed to replicate current practice in health and life sciences, including contemporary analytical chemistry and formulation laboratories, audiology booths, nursing and midwifery clinical skill suites. Our recent addition of a new radiography suite simulates real world settings, allowing you to put theory into practice. Integrated placements, optional work experience and voluntary opportunities also provide you with the chance to learn from professionals in the sector. Our students have already benefited from placements at schools, in, com in community centres, the NHS and major pharmaceutical companies, law enforcement agencies and community pharmacies. Alongside employability, we pride ourselves in producing graduates who are able to work as part of an interprofessional team and we have teaching designed to embed this throughout your time with us to further enhance your career prospects. Our graduates go on to secure jobs in globally recognised companies including GSK, AstraZeneca, LGC Forensics, Boots, 3M, the Ministry of Defence as well as the, as the NHS. I hope I've provided a flavour of health and life sciences and the community that you could be a part of. We look forward to seeing you soon. So, as I explained, that was our Dean of the Faculty, Dr. Simon Oldroyd, and um, hopefully you were able then to see some of the facilities um, in some of those video clips that we have here in the faculty. I'm delighted now then to hand over to my colleague, Jonathan, who's um, really going to follow on a lot from that video, really, and just give a bit more context to, to sort of what we do here in the faculty. So, John, do you want to just introduce yourself a little bit about and say who your role is, and then um, I know you've got some PowerPoint slides that you would like to run through as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, so, well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever uh, in the world you are. So my name's uh, Jonathan Fisher-Jones, or John, and I'm the Associate Dean uh, International for the Faculty of Health and Life Science. So broadly, my role is to look after all of the international student recruitment, uh, which includes obviously uh, the process of students getting here right up to graduation. And I'm always in contact for those who have also graduated and need a little advice or support. Alongside that, I look after the transnational education, the international partnerships, um, our, our pathway college in DMUIC, um, alongside the student and staff mobility. Uh, so that's me in a nutshell, Vanessa. 
Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. We're I say, delighted that you could come and sort of talk to our international student community a little bit more about um, the faculty, because who better than, than yourselves, really, to sort of talk to us a little bit about what students have to look forward to when they join us um, and sort of things to sort of be thinking about as they go through this application process. Um, and I know that Juanita, um, when we talk to her later on, will also be able to give her perspective um, from a current student that's gone through that application process um, and is now here studying with us um, at DMU. So shall we move on and we'll bring up your presentation then, John? Brilliant. Thank you, Vanessa. Fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, that's just the welcome slide. So if we could go on to the next one, if that's OK, Vanessa. Thank you. There we go. Uh, so wonderful, yeah. So as mentioned, obviously this uh, presentation, this half hour, um, is essentially all around the Faculty of Health and Life Science at DMU. Obviously, I'll try and answer any broader questions about the institution as well as we obviously work into linking the uh, with the other faculties. But in particular, for the Faculty of Health and Life Science, uh, we're the second oldest part of the university. So we were set up in 1909 uh, as Leicester School of Pharmacy. From there, we've had many iterations. Uh, you know, we've added on our subjects that are allied to medicine, such as biomedical, medical, our social sciences, such as psychology, as well as different healthcare professions alongside our school of nursing. Um, what you'll see from a lot of our courses is they're professionally accredited and regulated by the external governing bodies, which means it's not only the quality of our courses that I'm very proud of, you know, it's uh, the external the external regulators that monitor our courses to make sure they're up, for scra up to scratch so that when you leave uh, as our graduates, you're in a very good place with the relevant qualifications and accreditations and practical work experience when necessary. Uh, to go into your future employers. Uh, next slide, please, Vanessa. Um, so as mentioned, a lot of our courses are highly regulated. Uh, alongside that, and it's natural to have with that, a lot of relationships with uh, obviously professional bodies and employers, whether that be the NHS, um, obviously companies like Pfizer, Her Majesty's Prison Service, you know. Um, we're very interlinked with not only the local industry, but international industry as well. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I was speaking to Juanita just before this presentation. She's actually having the opportunity to uh, um, go over to Canada uh, on an exchange next year, where we also have, you know, big links with uh, the pharmaceutical industry there. Um, our facilities, uh, I know were highlighted in the video, but over the past couple of years, we've, we've had incredible investment that include, uh, you know, include our radiography suites, x-ray examining, mock hospital wards, clinical skills, birthing pools, state-of-the-art labs. We, a couple of years ago, we spent four million pounds on an extra couple of labs or in Port, uh, Portland building. Um, and within all of that we obviously have four separate schools within the faculty so what i'll do uh, those host over 60 courses i'll just go into the ones that are most relevant for international applicants now uh, vanessa next slide please uh, so we're very very lucky to have uh, the leicester school of nursing midwifery um which for a lot of the UK institutions that offer nursing, you know, with NMC registration, there aren't too many that are actually open to overseas applicants. Um, a lot will be open to home international students, uh, but very few are open to international students. Um, so our nursing uh, BSc is an incredible course with a 100% employability rate. Uh, when you come out of that three year course, you come out with an MNC registration, which is the Nursing and Midwifery Council registration. Um, it's an incredibly practical course. It's an incredibly intensive course. It's a wonderful course. So for about half of your studies, you're not only doing the academic side of it, but you're spending about half of it in, you know, the local hospitals, uh, predominantly in Leicester, but we also have placements in Nottingham as well. Uh, next slide, please. Then we go on to our School of Allied Health Sciences, Leicester School of Allied Health Sciences. Um, some actual student context, Juanita might be able to, to support with uh, in a bit, as well as I believe, and I hope I'm not wrong, that's uh, the courses she's studying. But we have our biomedical science, our medical science, uh, speech and language therapy, 
um, which are in, incredibly interesting courses. Um, a lot of our graduates from there go on to uh, work within the medical industry. Some go on to postgraduate medicine. Uh, the speech and language therapy also boasts a 100% employability rate, which again is very practical and very highly regulated. On the postgraduate side that I'll slightly touch on is our advanced biomedical science course, which um, I, I believe last year, and it's looking even more diverse this year, and had students from over 15 different countries studying on a, a postgraduate course, and they're normally much smaller, um, but incredibly lab intensive as well, incredibly practical. And our global health MA uh, has been a humongous success. So we launched that um, the year just gone, or this will be the first year our students graduate. And the growth in that and the internationalism on that, again, it, it's saying not only an international market, but a global market, really putting people in um, a position where they can take that next step up, whether they're already employed within the, um, the health and life science industry or the medical industry to go on to the management levels and really get a good insight onto that. Uh, next slide, please. And then we have our oldest and uh, sort of our flagship school, um, or as a lot of the staff would like to, to boast. Um, so we have uh, alongside the biomedical actually, and the, the last slide, we, we have an international year zero pharmacy. We also have an international year zero for health and life science as well. And we're setting up one for lab science coming up, uh, possibly not September, but January, which uh, allows access for those people obviously when you graduate at 17 and you still have that year to make up. Um, but our pharmacy, uh, the M Farm, it's a four year course as opposed to the standard three year course. And traditionally, we have about a 100% uh, employability rate. However, I believe it's around 97% at the moment with people uh, obviously wanting to go into different industries. But as you're aware, obviously, the, uh, the world has changed very much now, and uh, the pharmaceutical industry is, is an incredible place to be and work. We also have a top up in pharmaceutical science as well as an incredibly unique course. There are only uh, another two in the UK that are pharmaceutical and cosmetic sciences, um, which is incredibly unique and incredibly lab-based. And again, fantastic employability around it due to the uniqueness of, of the industry um, and how, how humongous the cosmetics industry is. When you go into the world of work with something even more unique, it really does set you apart. And obviously our forensic science uh, BSc as well. Uh, our postgraduate, um, two major flagship postgraduate uh, courses are the uh, pharmaceutical biotechnology and the pharmaceutical quality by design. I'm sure for, if, you, if you're looking at a postgraduate course, I'm sure you understand what pharmaceutical biotechnology is. However, pharmaceutical quality by design is a course that really looks at the processing and manufacturing nature of, uh, of the pharmaceutical industry which again it is not only applicable and incredibly warranted from moving away from batch, batch productions, but we also have a lot of people going into senior management and change management roles within different industries from that course. And again, over 100 years, uh, we've been teaching pharmacies for, so that's been since 1909. And the next one, please, Vanessa. And then we have our largest school, which is the School of Applied Social Sciences. So currently we have around a thousand students studying on psychology at, at different levels on different variations of the course. Um, it's an immensely, immensely popular course uh, that's often a great foundation uh, to go on to, you know, so many different courses. It, it gives you so many different insights into different ways of life, different industries. And from there, you can really specialize whether you want to stay in the psychology remit or go into something more business related. Uh, psychology is applicable to every career every day. Alongside that, we have the postgraduate courses in education practice, psychological well-being, and the more specialised health psychology. Thank you, Vanessa. So as mentioned previously, the majority of our courses are accredited and approved by people such as BPS, British Psychological Society, Institute for Biomed, Nursing Midwifery Council, um, British Pharmaceutical Council, and our academics tend to come from one of two backgrounds. They're either research active, which means they're really delving into what you'll be taught tomorrow and keep you on the cutting edge of uh, not just the standard what was being taught a couple of years ago, really pushing the boundaries on where that goes, alongside a lot of our staff actually coming straight from industry. 
so being academically qualified but really being able to give them the insight further the curriculum in a way that is fully appropriate um, for the industry you'll be going into so now we have a universal design for learning which essentially underpins everything we teach at dmu uh, it makes it accessible to all um, we want to make sure as we're a fully diverse uh, university that everybody has the equal opportunity to succeed um, that includes you know having uh, a minimum of one hour a week of a personal tutor should you so desire it uh, which means if somebody's not sure or they might be looking at it from a different way because i know how difficult it can be for international students sometimes just in the way we teach in the uk versus the way we uh, you know other other uh, countries uh, teach their degrees or high school diplomas, having that touch point with somebody who's truly looking after you and you can ask any questions that you might not be comfortable in a bigger class is always there for you. Uh, next slide, Vanessa. Oops, sorry, I, I believe I actually covered that one slightly, but it, it, it points to the personal tutor there that's issued to every student is mentioned. And then we have the Centre for Learning and Support classes. Um, so alongside just the personal tutor, we want to make sure that outside of class and outside of the lectures, the seminars, the lab sessions, uh, the placements, uh, we have an area where you can practice uh, perfect your essay writing. We've got the Student Advice Centre, which uh, can help you with timetabling, assessments, um, alongside our central student welfare. Because whilst we know, you know, we want you to have a wonderful time in the class. We also want to make sure that you're well looked after and comfortable in all the surroundings we give you. Uh, Vanessa. Thank you. So uh, the employability, this is something that we're incredibly proud of. It's, it's, it's something whilst we're, we want to be, um, we're, the whole basis of our strategy is to be an empowering university, uh, which includes every facet of diversity. But the outcome is always employability. We want you to essentially come here, um, grow academically, have a fantastic time, and ultimately get a job at the end of it. Uh, so DMU has been awarded as having the best university uh, careers and employability service in the whole of the UK, which is a truly landmark achievement. You know, there are obviously, as of this year, I think 123 public institutions within the UK. So to come number one, again, above a lot of the traditional Russell groups really means a lot to us. We offer guaranteed work experience through our DMU Works platform and the vast majority of the, the HLS uh, courses, especially the higher, ha more highly regulated one, offer embedded placement, volunteering, internships and employability mentoring as well. Um, we also, you know, give lifelong career support. So it's not just whilst you're here. Whilst you're here, yes, we look for the placements for you. We look at the uh, the opportunities to get you in front of employers. Um, we also look at the, the part time employability options that you can take. But it goes beyond that. It goes beyond just when you're graduating as well. You know, if you want to call us in 10 to 15 years time because you're looking for a career change, we're still here for you. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, and then I guess one of our most unique sort of selling points really is our city. You know, it's uh, Leicester's an incredibly unique place. You know, Britain is an incredibly unique and wonderful and diverse and open and accepting place. However, Leicester is the pinnacle of that. It's voted as, you know, uh, one of the top 10 student cities for living. The, the population of Leicester is around 240,000, about 60,000 of which are current students. Uh, both within us and uh, the other university in the city. So everything is geared around a student lifestyle, which not only makes it fun, relaxing, enjoyable, but also incredibly affordable. Um, and it was the first plural city within Europe, meaning that no one nationality dominates. So, you know, the, there are some stats there about 70 languages spoken, 14 faiths, you know, it's the biggest Diwali uh, celebration outside of India, which is which just makes everything wonderful. And you, 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 even me, I'm from you know a predominantly white area of the UK, North Wales, and the amount I've learned and grown from being in and around the city of Leicester, how much my eyes have opened, and how much it's changed me as a person has been wonderful. 
And, you know, this is me as a 30 something year old man, as opposed to, you know, a young student. And the location of the university as well, it's, it's not near the city, it, it's in the city. Um, it's, yeah, it's a three, four minute walk, I guess, to, you know, the, the town square. Uh, we're incredibly, incredibly lucky. Um, you know, we host the comedy festival, art festivals. It's, uh, it's a wonderful place to be. And then uh, we've got one last slide on our sustainability, which again is incredibly important uh, to the university. So I may read this a little bit verbatim, but uh, it says here that DMU is the lead HE institution in the UN's Join Together campaign. So to, to be the lead institution in a sustainable goal is, is a huge honor. Uh, we do a lot of work with the UN and have done for many years now. So to be you know, the lead HE institution in the UK is an incredibly proud moment for us. Uh, the UN sustainability goals are embedded not only to how we live in the university, but into every facet of our curriculum. You know, we want to be a unique university, you know, defined by the humanitarian aspects, the diversity aspects, how we contribute ecologically uh, to the university, how we support through things like Square Mile, which is our charitable project, with which we have facets of Square Mile India, where we do lots of work out of the Gandhi Ashram in Andabad, sending nurses, audiologists, architects outside of our faculty over, uh, where we can truly work to make the world a better place through through our platform and through the education and and development and support of, of our of our uh, yeah of our fellow peoples. Um, so yeah, Vanessa, I believe. There's a find out more slide that you might want to leave up or you can just talk about shortly. But yeah, that's all from me, Vanessa. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. Um, a fantastic overview and, and just sort of really helping to sort of give a bit of an insight there into the kind of things you can look forward to if you come and join us um, here at DMU and in the faculty. Um, I think what we're going to do now, I think it's the best place naturally to bring the current student in um, from the faculty, Juanita, and get Juanita to speak to a little bit about why she chose to come to DMU and, and hopefully she will back up some of the fantastic things that John was saying there about uh, the support that we have here in the faculty. So momentarily, John, thank you very much and we'll bring you back in shortly for some, for some Q&A. Hi, Juanita. Thank you for um, hanging around there and, and being really patiently behind the scenes. Um, so I'm sure the students that are at home uh, obviously been listening into what John is saying and hopefully feeling a little bit excited um, about coming to join um, DMU potentially in the future. So do you want to just share a little bit about yourself? So a little bit about what course you're studying here at DMU and where you're from and what, what year you're in. So we start off with that first. Okay, so I'm currently doing criminology with psychology. Um, I just finished my second year um, and yeah, <laughs> that's basically where I'm at now. And you're originally from yeah. Colombia, that's right, isn't it? And I, you've just yeah. momentarily gone back home uh, to have some um, holiday time, hopefully in a much nicer climate than what we've got here in the UK at the moment. Um, so yeah. uh, why, did you, why did you decide first and foremost to actually pick to study in the UK? Well, um, one of the main things I thought about when I was um, choosing where I could go and study um, was um, if the country had sort of like uh, academically um, achievements, academic achievements, specifically for its institutions. So um, I've always um, sort of known that the UK is a nation that um, is characterized by having high ranking universities. Um, and I have always had an interest in this and, and the British culture and sort of an admiration for um, this high quality education. Um, so that's one of the main reasons why I chose um, coming to the UK. Um, this recognition, it's not only for Europe, but it's for the, it's, it's worldwide. It's a worldwide recognition. If you um, are able to go to a university in the UK, um, you get um, incredible experience that's gonna be recognized anywhere you wanna go. Um, so that's one of the main things why I decided to come to the UK. Yeah, so I suppose leading on from that then, out of obviously all the universities that you could have picked um, to go to in the UK, um, why why did you decide to come to De Montfort University? 
So one of the things I liked a lot about DMU was the fact that it offered me um, the program or the degree I was looking for. So um, as I said, I'm doing criminology with psychology. And what I liked was that it did not offer me one or the other. It offered me both. It even offered me um, criminology with law, but I chose criminology with psychology. Um, and that was something that was very exciting for me. I was gonna be able to look at um, two disciplines that I was very interested in. Um, and also all of the amazing things that John just mentioned about the university. Um, the first thing would be the global opportunities that it offers. It sort of has a division that's called the NU Global and um, they offered a lot of academic global experiences that I was very keen to look into. I was able to get a place to go on exchange next year. And that's something that I didn't really think I would be able to do because you would think that being international would mean that you wouldn't get those sort of opportunities. But at DMU, I've always felt like I've had the chance to um, like the same opportunity as everyone else. So I really, really was excited about it. The welfare team, um, I heard great things about it. And uh, on my second year, I was able to get in touch with them and they were able, able to help me with um, any issue I was having, not academically, but just, you know, being in a completely different culture is always sort of like a shock. And they were able to help me with that. Um, when I was applying, I also heard about my gateway house and um, they sort of um, talked about it as if you could ask them any sort of question, anything you were worried about. So I, I was very worried about the documents. So as an international student, you have to get your BRP, you have to even get a work permit. And that's something that I was very worried about, but I was able to go and ask them any sort of question, any silly question. And they were even able to tell me where the police station was. <laughs> they were very helpful. So that's one of the main reasons why I, I, I chose the um, I mean, there's, there's so much there yeah. that obviously you could, you know, unpick there some of those bits. But I think it's fantastic you talk about that international experience that you've had. Because I say, obviously, being an international student, um, like you say, you might think, actually, am I able to still take part in these kind of international experiences? So um, I'm sure you won't mind me telling people that you're obviously going to go to an exchange for Canada. So um, another amazing part of the world that you're going to go and get to experience um, all through our kind of partnerships that we have here at the university internationally. So that's that's an amazing opportunity. So well done um, on securing that. You've touched a little bit about the support that you received as an international student. You're talking there about My Gateway um, and some of the other things. So I suppose a little bit then just to sort of think about the people that are sat at home that, you know, are going through this kind of application process at the moment or are starting to think about that. And what, was, what would be your best piece of advice to give them in terms of like thinking about coming to the UK to study or coming to DMU to study? Like what would be your best piece of advice for them? So I would suggest that if you're able to come to the International Welcome Week, that's um, very important because that's where you're going to meet people that are on the same path of, as you. They're worried about the same things as you and you're going to get a group of support that you can have throughout your whole stay at the university. Being by yourself is not going to lie very hard, but if you have that support system, um, you're gonna get through it very easily. Also wear a lot or bring a lot of uh, warm clothes. It's very cold, it's very rainy, <laughs> but um, yeah, just having a support system is very, very important. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. And I think hands down, that's probably one thing um, amongst many that we do really well here at DMU in terms of offering that student support and that kind of, um, you know, that reassurance that if you are coming from a different country, there's also going to be like minded people here as well. I know we have a fantastic international student community here. Um, and like you say, that International Welcome Week is really important because you get to sort of know, um, know what that community is and how you can engage with them. I know there's different international student societies that we have. Um, so lots of opportunity for you to sort of 
feel connected, I suppose, and, and maybe and make friends with people that are from your own country. So you have that little bit of connection with home as well. Um, so thank you for sharing some of your um, experience with us, Juanita. I'm going to keep you um, on screen as well. And I'm just going to bring um, John back on as well. And I think um, just to sort of end, really, if I just go through any kind of questions that we might have had um, from back home. So um, we do have one and I'll just bring um, bring that up. I think it's one that I might be able to sort of help with. And it's asking about whether PhD students within this school are expected to go through the credibility test before going to the visa interview. Um, I think the best the best advice I can give you really is to contact our admissions team about that and just double check what the process is. And as far as I'm aware, I think all students will have to go through that credibility test. Um, so I don't think it's something that will waver um, for being a PhD student necessarily. But um, I think the best thing just to make, double check is to get that um, confirmed from our admissions team. So I'll just bring up um, an email address now that you can just get in touch with us and we can forward that on to them. So if you do have any questions relating to your application or just generally about um, your course or the university, you can get in touch with us at that website there, at that email address there, sorry. And um, we'll make sure that we get back to you um, with your answers. You can also as well check out our international pages on our website, which have all the information that you might need as a student, uh, sorry, as an applicant, as an inquirer, there's lots of information on those pages. Um, particularly to do with um, applying uh, and coming to the DMU and coming to the UK. So do go and have a look on our website as well. So I just have another couple of questions, just this one here as well. Is there accommodation for international students? John, do you want to kick us off with that one? And I'm sure, Juanita, you can back up as well. Um, yes, yes, we do. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have uh, lots and lots of accommodation so that there's never any issues. But uh, Juanita is probably best place that she's lived in them uh, to talk about it. <laughs> yes, so there are a lot of accommodations for international students. Um, what I would suggest um, as an international student myself is to um, look at all of the options you have. If you're someone who you know you're going to be out and about all the time, hanging out with people, maybe the accommodation, it is important, but probably you don't have to look into it a lot. But if you're someone who's a little bit more reserved and you know you spend most of your time um, you know, on your own space, um, make sure to look for one that suits you a little bit better. But there are a lot of accommodations for international students. You can share with um, your flat maybe with people that are also international or from the UK. Um, so there, there are a lot of options available. Absolutely. And again, if you go onto our web pages um, on the international um, site, you'll be able to actually see some of the details there about the guaranteed accommodation for international students. Um, and you'll be able to have a look at some of the pictures, some of the videos, so you can have a little look around um, some of those and have a look as well. And then I think we'll just end on this one. So we've got this one. Is there support available to help with my English language skills? Uh, yes, there is. So we have uh, in sessional English and as I mentioned before, the study skills um, that are always there. I'm not saying loads of people take them up, but um, I guess there are two major options when we've got our just make sure I'm uh, getting it. Yeah, the Centre for Learning and Study Support helps you not only with your language skills, but essay skills, etc. And we also do pre-sessional English courses as well. Um, so you can either arrive a little bit earlier if if either your IELTS is slightly too low or you just don't feel quite confident and you think you could do with, you know, um, four weeks pre-sessional, it might boost you up. But we do have the in-sessional, which means essentially as you're here and studying, yeah, there's lots of support there for you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. OK, so I think uh, we've just about run over time now, so we'll end on that one. Um, so all that remains is to um, thank you all for watching uh, wherever you are. We hope you found this informative and, and got the information that you need. Um, as I say, if there's anything that you think of after the live stream or you want to get in touch, um, I'll just bring that email address up on there again. And do feel free to get in touch with us um, and somebody will be able to get back to you with, uh, with an answer. Um, we hope you enjoy the rest of your day, wherever you are. And um, thank you to John and Juanita as well for giving up your time. So thank you very much, everyone. And bye bye.